welcome everyone to this NPTEL online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, today we are going to learn regarding another of biological unit operation or treatment system which is used for wastewater treatment and this system is called trickling filter. Remember in the last few lectures we started studying the treatment of wastewater using various methods and we studied the system of activated sludge process and sequential batch reactors in last two lectures. Now, in both the conditions activated sludge or activated biomass was there which was suspended inside the reactor. The wastewater goes into the reactor rea and then the reaction happens between the organic matter present in the wastewater and the activated biomass which is suspended inside the reactor. Since both the operations were aeration or aerobic operations, so aeration was done and also mixing was compulsory. So, as to maintain a proper contact between the organic substrate and the active biomass. So, this system the activated sludge system or SBR systems in both the cases the activated biomass was in the suspension form inside the reactor and then aerobic system was there where air or oxygen was supplied to the reactor. Now, there is a fundamental difference with respect to suspension of active biomass in place of tickling filter. Here the active biomass is not suspended it is attached growth on some media. So, trickling filter is an attached growth type of process that means, it is not suspension type of process, it is attached growth type of process in which microorganisms attached to a medium, this medium may be different are used for removing organic matter from wastewater. So, these microorganisms utilize which are grown they utilize the they utilize this biomass to convert this into CO2 and H2O. Certainly, the biomass will also grow. So, this type of system is common to a number of technologies such as rotating biological contactors that we will be studying. Then packed bed reactors are bio tivers. These reactors are also called non submerged fixed film biological reactors. So, trickling filter is a attached growth system which is important. Now, the microorganisms since they are attached growth on some packing or some material. So, this packing is very important. So, trickling filter uses different types of packing medium which may be composed of crushed stone, slag, rock, plastic etcetera over which the wastewater is distributed continuously. The ideal medium should have the following properties. So, the packing material can have it is desirable to have following property. It should have very high surface area. So, this is one of the most essential requirement and this is required so as to maintain a proper flow of water which is going towards the bottom and also the proper flow of air which may depending upon the temperature and conditions which may go up or down. It should have high wide space for flow rate of water and air. Then it should be lightweight biologically inert. Okay. So, it should not react with the microorganism themselves. It should be inert on which the microorganism should grow. It should be chemically resistance that means if waste, wastewater is containing any amount of organic substance or other, that organic substance should not be able to chemically degrade the medium itself. Otherwise, the medium collapse etcetera may happen. So, this chemical resistance and mechanical durability are one of the essential requirements of the medium and certainly it should be low cost. So, all these lightweight biological inertness, chemical resistance and mechanical durability are the essential requirement of medium and they should have high surface area and high wall wide space along with 
lowest cost possible. So, we can have different parameters. The important characteristics of medium include the porosity. It is a measure of wide space available for the passage of wastewater and air and for ventilation of product gases. So, if porosity is not good, in fact, the efficiency will go down because the flow rate of water we cannot sustain, the flow rate of air we cannot sustain and thus the efficiency will certainly go down. So, the most important characteristic, it should be highly porous. Then a specific surface area, it refers to amount of surface area of the medium that is available for biofilm growth. If the surface, the porosity is there if during the packing, but if we do not have the bed porosity is good enough, but we do not have the surface area. Then the biological film, the amount of biological film which will grow will be less. So, that means the actual treatment of wastewater will also become less. A specific surface area which is like meter square per meter cube of the material is very, very important for film growth as well as for the treatment efficiency which is desirable. The size of the medium may range from 50 to 100 millimeter having a specific surface area in the range of 50 to 65 meter square per meter cube of the bed with porosity of 40 to 50 percent. Remember the bed porosity here porosity means the bed porosity once the this bed is there and then we have packing it which is there. So, all the packing is filled. So, what is the space between these? So, what are the these spaces which are there? So, the bed porosity should be 40 to 50 percent along with the specific surface area of the packing material to be around 50 to 65. If it is more, it is better. So, this is there. Now, what are the components of the trickling filter which is given here? So, actually this is we can see the this is a stone with microorganism on the surface. So, this stone or we can say the packing media will be this is the main trickling filter, the packing area this will be totally filled. Then this inlet water will be coming and it will be distributed. So, if we can say like this on the top view, so we can have a this is the main revolving point. So, we can have different arms which will be there. So, waste water will be coming and from each of the arm this distribution of water will happen and these arms actually they themselves are revolving continuously. So, that means they are moving on a certain all around the parameter certain system is maintained. So, that the arms are here there are wheels and these wheels are continuously moving across each of the arms. So, continuous distribution of water is taking place and then the water is going inside this packing media and during the percolation over the stones or the packing media, the treatment happens and ultimately the treated water is obtained here. Now, depending upon the temperature conditions which are prevailing, the air will also either go down or go up. So, this will depend upon the temperature inside the trickling filter and what is the temperature and at the ambient condition. So, sometimes the air may be forced to go in or out, then there is may be condition where draft induction is there because of the draft natural flow of air will be there. So, this will depend upon the ambient condition and the actual trickling filter water conditions. So, if Suppose, in one of the conditions we are making here the T f inside the tinkling filter. Suppose, the temperature T f is greater than T a. So, that means, here the temperature is suppose around 35 degree centigrade or 25 degree centigrade, but outside it is 10 degree centigrade. So, that means, we have more colder air outside. So, under this condition the air will go inside, it will get warmed and it will go up. Okay. So, this is because with warming it will become lesser denser. So, it will be. So, the movement will become like this under this condition. 
but in another condition suppose outside temperature is 35 degree centigrade, but inside again it is suppose inside the tickling filter it is 25 degree centigrade. Now, this is warmer and this is cooler. So, under this condition the natural draft will be like this the air will go in it will become heavier and again go out because the temperature here is less. So, this is the natural draft. So, there may be natural draft tickling filter or we may also have conditions where may force the air to go inside and come out. So, these are the essential components of the tickling filter. Now, going further what is the wastewater dosing? So, the influent wastewater is normally applied from the top of the tickling filter. So, under a hydraulic head of about 1 meter jet action through the nozzles is sufficient to power the rotor. So, there is a rotor under which the movement is taking place. As the flow is intermittent, there is enough air circulation through the pores between the dosing. The distributor arms distributes the wash water continuously over the medium which trickles down through the bed. So, this is how the wastewater dosing takes place. Under drain, there are under drains in, in the tinkling filter. These under drains are used in the tinkling filter to support the filter medium over them, then collect the treated effluent, they will collect the treated effluent after the treatment and the collect the slough biological solids also, because the biological solids which will continuously grow on the medium. So, at, after certain time depending upon the flow rate, these slough biological solids away and they go into the under drain. So, this is done. Also, these under drains help in the circulation of the air through the filter depending upon the conditions prevailing. So, they may be up draft, down draft. So, depending upon the draft condition which are prevailing. The liquid flow in the under drains and collection channels should not be more than half full to adequate for adequate air flow. So, these under drains are designed in such conditions that the wastewater flow inside the under drain should never be more than half of the under drain. So, it should always be less than under uh, less than half so that the air flows can be maintained otherwise the efficiencies of operation will go down. Process description of the trickling filter. A rotary or a stationary distribution mechanism distributes the wastewater from the top of the filter percolating it through the interstices or spaces of the film covered medium. So, we have a stationary or a rotary distribution mechanism is generally there which distributes the wastewater from the top of the filter over the medium. As the wastewater moves through the filter, the organic matter is adsorbed on the film and the degradation happens by a mixed population of aerobic microorganism. So, there is a film which is covering the medium as the wastewater flows above that the organic matter is absorbed biodegraded by the population of the aerobic microorganism. For that they require oxygen. So, oxygen required for organic degradation is supplied by air circulating through the filter induced by the natural draft or ventilation. So, it may be possible that we may have natural draft as I explained. So, oxygen will be required as the biological films continue to grow because of the utilization of the organic matter as substrate. The microorganisms near the surface lose their ability to cling to the medium and a portion of the slime layer falls off the filter. So, it happens naturally and this process is called sloughing. The sloughed solids are picked up by the under drain systems and transported to a clarifier for removal from the wastewater. So, these all these microorganisms are removed from the wastewater by these uh, secondary clarifier. The microorganisms used in the tickling filter. The microorganism used are mainly facultative bacteria that decompose the organic matter in the wastewater along with the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. So, it includes like acromobacter, 
flavobacterium, pseudomonas, alkaligenesis. So, depending on the, upon the requirement, the microorganisms may be different. In the lower reaches of the filter, nitrifying bacteria are usually present. So, this is there. So, so we have a there is one difference is that so that means we have a clarifier also for the removal of wastewater from this system. Remember, there is a fundamental difference in terms of clarifier as compared to activated sludge process and trickling filter. What is the difference? In the activated sludge process ASP, the water is coming, okay. it is going into the secondary clarifier SCM just writing for simpleness. From here, the sludge is taken out some of the sludge is recycled back and some of the sludge is wasted. So, this is wasted sludge and then this is recycled sludge for maintaining the required amount of MLSS. Now, in the case of trickling filter which is like here. So, for the case of trickling filter here the wastewater is coming it is treated after that from the under then it will go into the secondary clarifier this is trickling filter. Now, from here waste will be taken out. So, this wasted sludge is there, but this sludge will not be recycled back, but it is a possibility that the water which is coming out here treated water it may be recycled back into the system because the efficiency may not be good enough. So, remember in the trickling filter we do not recycle the wasted sludge, we recycle the treated wa water for improving the efficiency this is called recirculation of water. But in the case of activated sludge system we recycle the sludge not the water after treatment the treated water is coming here and it is taken off. So, this is the difference as compared to ASP in the trickling filter. Going further, the factors which affect the operation of trickling filter. So, a high organic load results in rapid growth of biomass. So, if the organic load is very high, the rapid growth of biomass will happen. And excessive growth of biomass may result in plugging of pores and subsequent flooding of portion of the medium. So, it will actually hamper the operation. So, there are many consequences may happen. So, that is why the organic loading should be properly be decided. So, many times that is why the recycling is done because treated effluent is there, its organic loading is much lower as compared to the original wastewater. So, we depending upon the requirement we may actually manipulate the organic loading which is there on the trickling filter. Then the hydraulic flow rates, increasing the hydraulic flow rate increases the slowing and helps to keep the bed open. The range of hydraulic and organic loading rates for trickling filters uh, uh, will be shown later on as a design criteria. Then the relative temperature of wastewater and ambient air, already I have discussed this. So, this is very very important in case of trickling filter. Remember cool water absorbs heat from the air and the cooled air falls towards the bottom of the filter in a co-current fashion with the water. So, cool water will absorb heat from the air and the cool water the cooled air will will go down along with the water. So, operation will become concurrent or co-current. Warm water heats the air causing it to rise through the under drain and up through the medium. So, there is a condition this condition will prevail when the waste water is having higher temperature or the temperature inside the trickling filter is higher than the ambient condition. So, this is the condition when actually the air will go up through the trickling filter whereas, in this condition the T w or T temperature inside the trickling filter is less than that in the ambient or for ambient air. As the temperature differentials of less than 3 to 4 degree relatively little air movement results. So, when suppose the difference becomes very less then at that condition the stagnant conditions prevent good ventilation. So, and under this condition we may have to force the air 
to go either up or down. So, counter current operations are generally more beneficial, they give better efficiencies as compared to co current operations. So, and when the temperature differentials are very less, they may cause problem. So, that is why we have to select properly under which condition we have to operate the extreme cold may result in icing and destruction of the biofilms. So, that is why uh, tickling filter are not good enough where the extreme cold conditions may prevail. Now, there are many design equations which have been developed for uses uh, in the tickling filter design. So, some of these design equations are uh, we have given here and we can use these depending upon that what conditions are prevailing for our case. So, first method is called the tentative method of 10 states of USA and the equation is that E is equal to R by Q plus 1 E is equal to R by Q plus 1.5, where Q is the flow rate and R is the recycle flow rate. So, remember this is trickling filter T f, waste water is coming which is Q and then we have a secondary clarifier from which the we have wasted sludge. Then this is the treated effluent and this treated effluent is recycled back which is R. Remember this is and again the flow rate is Q. So, this is the Q is the flow rate, R is the recycle. So, and these equations are good when the raw settled domestic sludge is having BOD less than this and the BOD entering the filter here that means inside this including the recirculation and is less than the 3 times the BOD expected in the effluent. So, certain conditions are there for each of the design equation. After tentative method of 10 states, uh, we have Wells equation. So, Wells equation is used for two stage uh, trickling filter systems and uh, in the two stage it systems it is possible that we have two trickling filters which are there. So, they may be operated this is one, this is second. So, this is possible and uh, after that there may be a secondary clarifier as C and then there is a recycling. So, this type of system is also possible. So, in the Wells equation can be used. Remember in this equation, so for a single stage system and for suppose we have two stage systems, so for the first stage this equation can be used. So, Wells equation can be used for single filter also, it can be used for two trickling filters in series, two stage system. So, for the first stage or for single stage system, the equation is given by this. Here S E stands for the effluent BOD of the filter. So, what is coming out then R I stands for the S I stands this S I stands for the influent BOD, the one which is going into the BOD, into the tickling filter. E stands for effluent, R is the ratio of recirculated flow to the wastewater flow, D is the filter depth, remember D is the filter depth and A is the filter plan area. So, what is the area? This, this is the D and this is the area which is there on the filter plan. So, this is there. T is the wastewater temperature here and it whether it is more than 20 degree centigrade, it is less than 20 degree centigrade. K and N which is the coefficients which are given here are the empirical constants for municipal wastewater K is taken to be 0 0.02, N is to be 0 0.5 and the subscripts these I may be 1 or 2 depending upon the stage numbers. Then we have NRC equation, the following equation is used for single stage system and for the first stage of two stage system. So, this again the nomenclatures are same, is there are some fundamental difference which are there with respect to NRC equation or for the equation of 10 states or for a, a Wells equation. So, all the notations are same, uh, but there are significant difference which have been there and because of which uh, these equations have been derived. Similarly, for the second stage of a two stage system, the following equation can be used. In this case, there is a term new term which is F. So, F is the recirculation factor. So, how much recirculation is being done? 
So, F these F 1 and F 2 are recirculation factor and V is the filter volume. So, in place of depth and area the volume has been used. So, volume will always be equal to depth into area. So, remember this. So, we have in this case the V has been given. Then there is another equation which is given by Eckenfelder equation which is used for plastic media. Remember this is used for plastic media. This equation was given and K is the observed rate constant for a given filter depth. S A is the specific surface area here the specific surface area of the filter has been used and D is the filter depth, Q is the wastewater flow rate and A is the filter plan area or filter area. M and N are empirical constants. So, remember these are empirical constants and their values may be obtained from the literature. So, S E and S I are the, so remember here this is the fraction of treatment that happens inside the reactor. K is the observed rate constant for a given filter. So, this is there. Then another equation was given by Germ Germain and Schulz. This is similar to the Eckenfelder equation, again for plastic media, but with some difference. And here there are constants which are encountering for temperature also. So, K20I is the treatability constant corresponding to a specific filter depth Di at 20 degree centigrade. But suppose the filter uh, this uh, a specific filter depth changes. So, under those conditions we can use this equation. So, once we have data for one system we can use this equation for finding the data for another system and there are n and x are empirical constant n is usually 0.5 x is 0.5 for rocks and 0.3 for class flow plastic media. So, these are the different Many equations are available for trickling filter design. Depending upon the conditions prevailing, we can use these equations. Now, uh, in the end, we will be trying to solve a problem before ending this section on trickling filter. And in this case, uh, the problem we have to calculate the value of Kf, the uh, constant, and the influent BOD to the trickling filter for different. R by Q ratio. So, R by Q ratio has been given to be 1.65. So, given that the raw settled BOD after primary settling it is coming to be 220 milligram per liter. So, here this value is 2 remember 220 milligram per liter. The flow rate the hydraulic loading on this trickling filter is given as 30 meter cube per day per meter square and depth of filter is 1.5 meter. The empirical constant and effluent BOD after secondary settling, here it is given that it has to be 30 milligram per liter and this Q is given to be 30 meter cube per day per meter square. So, these conditions are given. Now, we have to find out what is the actual influent BOD which is going into the tickling filter and based upon that we can find out other parameters. So, what we do is that we put a balance on the system and for doing this remember Q S A is the flow rate which is going into the at this point. So, at mixing point 1 we are putting a balance at mixing point 1. So, Q S A is coming from the primary unit Q R S. So, remember after treatment the S is the concentration and suppose this is the Q R which is being recycled bank and the concentration is S. So, concentration will remain the same 35 milligram per liter. So, we are assuming so this is getting mixed. So, this is Q R S and after that the flow rate becomes Q plus Q R and S0 is the loading on the tickling filter which has to be determined. So, from this we can find out capital S is equal to Q plus Q R S0 minus Q S A upon Q R and if we divide by Q R Q this equation becomes 1 plus Q R Q S0 minus S A Q R Q. So, from here also from the same equation we can also find this equation. 
So, any of these equations can be derived from equation 1. Now, if we use this is second and this is third. Now, if we we can put the values in the equation third and we can find out the value of S 0. So, it is given that S A which is coming is having a BOD of 220 milligram per liter. So, this is 220. Now, the the recycle ratio is already given that we are going to use 1.65. So, Q R by Q the value in as compared to here it is very high. So, Q R by Q is 1.65 and 35 is the total. So, 1 plus this this becomes 1.65. So, this is the loading which will happen on the tickling filter 104.81. Now, from the Eckenfelder equation which was given earlier, the S by S 0 is equal to exponential minus k f d q raise to n. Now, in this case all the parameters are known to us. So, the this is the concentration after treatment, this is the loading concentration on the tickling filter, 1.5 is the depth the flow rate is 30 on the tickling filter and 0.5 is there. So, the value of k f can be obtained. There could be opposite things also which could have been asked like in place of k f we could have asked the depth also once k f has been given. So, this is possible. So, this way we can design a tickling filters under various conditions. Remember tickling filter is different as compared to activated sludge process or SBR. In the trickling filter, the microorganisms are attached growth on a media, which is essentially required to have a very high surface area. The bed porosity should be high. We have also, uh, it is very important to check the temperature difference with respect to ambient conditions. If the temperature conditions are not good enough, the natural draft will never be there and the flow of air will not be there. So, under those conditions forced flow of air has to be done. So, the temperature differential between the wastewater temperature and the air temperature has to be cross checked always for better operation of the this tickling filter. So, tickling filter is different as compared to activated sludge process. They have some benefits as compared to the treatment efficiencies are not as good as this uh, activated sludge process, but the mode of operation and other things are very simple. If we choose a proper filter media, so depending upon these requirements also tickling filter cannot be used under those very cold climate conditions. Otherwise, the freezing etcetera may happen and the wastewater flow may not happen. So, all these things are important uh, during the design of tickling filter. We will continue further with understanding of other reactor systems or other unit operations where attached growth system is there in the next lecture. Thank you very much. You can refer to any of these books for better understanding of tickling filter. Thank you very much.